Got Matt Samick on the line from Trojans Wire to break down the Pac-12 and USC. And as we step off the field, but of course related to the football, that is uh, the paramount question at USC. And that's the coaching search that's um, uh, going on as um, Dante Williams is manning the team as interim coach right now. Uh, from a national perspective, a lot of big games over the weekend kind of affected um, in a way in which you, you address with me and we discussed before we started to record, uh, the, depending on your vantage point, could make a particular coach more attractive and in better position to gain the USC job or may want uh, put them in a position where they would want to stay where they're at. Yeah, so you know, if you're a if you're a USC coach, if you're a USC fan, if you're a USC administrator, you know what comes to mind as being really important. You know, as as the head coach of the USC Trojans, high on the list would be and that is what Luke Fickle just did with Cincinnati. You know, if you can go into South Bend and win. That's a, that, that recommends you pretty darn well for the, for the USC job. And so we're in a situation, Mark, where, as, as you hinted at in your question, Penn State and Cincinnati are both in position. Like, they both have a shot right now at the college football playoff. And obviously, you know, this is, we have two months to let this all play out. But we can now just at least entertain the question in our minds of, you know, what happens if one of those two schools, one of those two coaches makes the playoff? Will that will that coach be more or less likely to be USC's next guy? And so it's really a two pronged thing. Obviously, if you make the playoff, you're a more attractive candidate. USC AD Mike Bone is more likely to make that coach first on his list. But at the same time, while being first on Mike Bone's list, making the playoff might make James Franklin of Penn State or Luke Fickle of Cincinnati more inclined to say, hey, I made the playoff where I am. Do I need to relocate to Los Angeles uh, to make the playoff and achieve the highest goals that I have in my career? It could work the other way. So uh, making the playoff would elevate Franklin or Fickle on Mike Bones' wish list, but at the same time, it might make the coach more inclined to stay put. So you're dealing with two different variables at the same time. What helps one of the variables could hurt the other variable that's what makes this so fascinating uh, between James Franklin and Luke Fickle. It's, it also magnifies the Penn State Iowa game, a top five matchup. You know, so if, if if Franklin wins, does that increase the likelihood or does it decrease the likelihood that he'll be USC's next coach? We don't really know because we don't know whether making the playoff would make one of those two men more inclined to stay put or more inclined to want to go to LA and become a rock star out in Hollywood. Yeah. There's no question that the Cincinnati football name doesn't come anywhere close to the stratosphere of USC Penn state. It could be argued is in the same class. I would think most people would say USC's a slight half a step above Penn state all time. We don't know if those coaches even consider that or believe that to be a factor in their decision if they in fact can prove what you just stated that they can win and win on the big stage where they are yes and i think another thing is that is that you know it's in penn state you have over a hundred thousand fans for big games you have wide outs you have the the prime time treatment from abc cincinnati's not in that same media or fan universe you have a small old stadium much smaller capacity. It's a very different vibe. I mean, you have loyal you have loyal fans, but that loyal fan base is a much smaller core. There's no kind of national or statewide resonance. You know, Ohio State is the show in the state of Ohio. So, so in terms of fan bases and in terms of media publicity, it, the, they're two different worlds. But uh, you know, Luke of Luke Fickle, like I'm 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 studying Luke Fickle a lot, as you can imagine. He's coached in Ohio his whole career. You know, he, he spent a little bit of time at Akron, but he's coached 15 straight years with Ohio State, 2002 through 2016, mostly as linebacker coach and co-defensive coordinator under both Jim Tressel and Urban Meyer, and then he goes to Cincinnati. So he he likes being in Ohio. His wife uh, and and his mom, you know, that they they like being in Ohio. They place value on that. So there's there's something about being at home 
being where you've always liked to be. You know, Luke Fickle was born in Columbus. So, you know, he just might like staying in Ohio and maybe he, he's content to be at Cincinnati for the next several years. It would be a lot like Chris Peterson, who didn't leave Boise for a long time. He wanted to stay at Boise State for a decade or so, make that program not just like a one-time champion, but a sustained force in the college football world. And it was only after spending about a decade there that he finally felt the urge to scratch the itch, see what else was out there. So Chris Peterson offers an interesting comparison with Luke Fickle. He just might want to stay at Cincinnati for several more years. And then maybe in like 2026, 27, maybe then it will be a, a time when Luke Fickle says, you know, let me look at look at what else is out there. Um, you know, it's all speculation, but just that's an interesting parallel to consider as a coach in his career. And it's certainly a narrow path that I would not recommend anyone to bank on, but Luke Fickle having achieved what he has at Cincinnati and, of course, being an Ohio State player and longtime coach, as you mentioned, that might be the transition that he's looking for to ascend to the Ohio State job eventually. Absolutely. That, that could be his, his, his long-term uh, plan. And of course, let's say, you know, we've talked about James Franklin and Penn State. Let's say Penn State beats Ohio State this year and Ohio State loses another game and go, falls to nine and three. Ryan Day's seat, it wouldn't be a hot seat, but you could begin to see uh, Ryan Day's seat of power erode such that in 2023, you know, if he doesn't, if he falls to nine and three this year, has another nine and three season in 2022. Well, you could you could have a Luke Fickle drum beat for 2023. Like that's in the realm of possibility. I wouldn't assign likelihood to it, but but you can kind of see that given the way Ohio State has struggled without Justin Fields this year, it could be a kind of situation mark where you know, much as out here at USC, Sam Darnold carried Clay Helton in 2016 and 2017 you know if Ohio State finishes nine and three this year you will hear plenty of people say well it was just Justin Fields carrying Ryan Day's jockstrap the past two seasons and so if that larger scenario unfolds Luke Fickle is going to be number one in terms of Ohio State rumors and stirrings and whispers uh, as the successor to Ryan Day. Yeah, and Ryan Day, I hear this all the time, especially after the Oregon loss, is just uh, basically maintaining Urban Meyer's program. So basically that's all he's done as well. So, yes, uh, very few places in America would fire a coach after going 9-3, and three, but Ohio State certainly has the expectations and the mindset to do it. They once fired John Cooper after an 8-3 and three regular season. So it could possibly happen.